welcome to Alton Park for live coverage of the GT Cup Championship. We've got two pit stop races for you today, the first of which is getting underway very soon. Before that, here's a reminder of all the action from Snetterton a few weeks back. Despite the dominant display with four wins out of four races for Sam and Richard Neary at Snetterton, heading into Alton Park, it's the Top Cats Lamborghini of Jensen Lunn and Warren Gilbert who top the overall standings. The ABBA Racing Mercedes-Benz is just two points behind, however, with a gap opening up to third place occupied by Simon Orange and Joshua Jackson in the Orange Racing-powered GMH Janetta. Yeah, season's gone really well. Um, it's been a strong year for us in the new Lamborghini. Uh, currently leading class and leading the overall championship, so really pleased with how we've gone. So far this year, very competitive in GT Cup as always. Um, lots of really quick guys up and down the pit lane, um, but so far we've managed to, to do what we've needed to do and, and top, in the, top in the points table, so we're happy at the moment. Yeah, no, the championship is looking really interesting this year. You know, uh, Warren's obviously doing a great job in his team. So, uh, you know, it's all to play for, only two points in at the minute, so uh, hopefully we can have a good weekend and uh, I'll see how we get on. We started back at Old Park, I haven't driven here since 2018, um, and nothing like this, so uh, it's definitely more. It's definitely an enjoyable track. Uh, one of my favourites, probably this and Brands actually two are the best ones on the year. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a good weekend, hopefully uh, some good results come along with it. In terms of the group leaders heading into Alton Park, it's Sam and Richard Neary who lead Group GT3. In Group GTC, it's Jensen Lunn and Warren Gilbert. Group GTB is led by the Team Hard Racing Porsche of Richard Marsh and Sam Randon. The formidable pairing of Simon Orange and Joshua Jackson top not one but two groups, driving the McLaren in Group GTH and the Janetta in Group GTA. Finally, the beautiful SB Race Engineering Brabham of Paul Bailey and Ross Wiley top group GTO, with everything still to play for at the halfway stage of the season. Ready to go and um, as you saw, or as I just said, we are at the midpoint of the season. It's been a while since we've visited Alton Park here in Cheshire, so we thought it would be a good idea to have a reminder of the circuit and very kindly championship leaders Warren Gilbert and Jensen Lund took us for a test lap yesterday afternoon. Championship leader Warren Gilbert is the guide to Alton Park, having negotiated Old Hall, the Avenue and Denton's. We're now down at the left-hander at Cascades along Lakeside. 
Long straight here for the championship leader. Warren Gilbert showing some good speed. This is a very tricky corner. You might see some passes here. You may not. It's not for the faint-hearted. Neither is the Shell Oils hairpin. It's actually banked. If you walk the circuit from the bottom to the top, of the banking it, it's a good six feet it's a remarkable corner we had very wet conditions this morning in the warm-up and qualifying and there could be some different lines to be had around that banking so anyway out of shell oils down to britain's which we've negotiated uphill to the appropriately named hill top then it's down down the gears on the brakes into the hislops chicane we'll clear that past the second commentary position here at the circuit which is Nickerbrook. then it is up the wonderfully named clay hill under the spectator bridge plenty of spectator access here if you can deal with traffic that's henry Dawes in the Ginetta. we're just going past the class winner here uh, in gt cup earlier on in the season Double apex Druid's corner before we head down into Lodge, the final corner on the lap. Possible overtaking opportunities here as well. Maybe a lunge or a late break down the inside. Talking of down, down the dip into Deer Leap. Up hill again, up across the line. That is 2.6 miles of the full Alton Park International Track. So that's what the circuit looks like. Obviously, decidedly better weather conditions yesterday afternoon. It has been chucking it down all morning. Thankfully, it stopped raining for our very first race. It is a pit stop. It's 40 minutes Super Saturday, so we've got two pit stops for you today. I can tell you that the Neary's I've taken pole position, but to give you the full rundown, it's my pleasure to hand you over to commentating legend Richard John Neal. Oh, thank you, Michelle. I'm not sure about a legend, but uh, maybe a bit of a nightmare sometimes. What a grid we've got. Far from being a nightmare here today at Alton Park. It was wet and horrible when we arrived, first thing. And the drivers were going out for a warm-up. Uh, all our shoes are all squelchy and horrible now. But thankfully for the spectators that obviously with COVID have pre-booked coming into the event, things are beginning to dry up. And I can see from my commentary box window, we've got there. Hey, look at that. Great to have fans back with us at racetracks. And as ever, the MSV team doing a super job to welcome everybody back in safety, of course. But look at that. Really good. Uh, knowledgeable fans that have come out for today and thankfully the rain has abated for the moment. It did however mean that we had a very very interesting warm-up and qualifying session. Remember we have effectively three types of driver group. We have the sporting drivers who you know might be first time sports car racing for them. We then have the pro sporting drivers who are somewhere in between the sportsmen and the full-time professional drivers and we have the pros themselves who are racing and, and they fit into the GT Cup championship format in different ways. Essentially it's about getting the sporting drivers in and we've got a number of cars that have two sporting drivers but as a sportsman, you can have a pro sporting driver or a pro helping you in terms of coaching and, and the driver pairing. Nice to welcome back Tom Barrow to GT Cup. He is there in the BMW and looks like a pit lane start for him. So he's going to have some work to do. The driver's saying uh, earlier on uh, when I went out that overtaking was going to be something of a premium here today with the amount of standing water that we had on track. And that also one of the probably one of the narrower circuits that we race on here in the UK and a car maybe going half a car's width offline could make it difficult for passing. Now, the reason I'm saying this is that it was a wet qualifying and the championship positions getting shuffled up in the grid. So we're seeing a few people who are qualifying out of perhaps their normal position here at Alton Park. As Michelle said, two pit stop races today. Those of you who are well ac acquainted with uh, the format, as normally described to you by my good friend and colleague Mark Werrell, will know that normally on each day we have a sprint race and a pit stop race. But today, luckily for the pro drivers, I guess, they get two bites of the cherry. What an impressive field. It's been my pleasure to have followed GT Cup for many, many seasons and just look at the quality of the entry that we have. Where else are you going to see seven McLarens, six Ginettas, four Porsches, three Aston Martins and Lamborghinis, two Mercedes, and of course the names of Marcos, Radical, Ferrari, Nissan, and the Brabham on the grid as well. A superb 
scene set for you. Very quick look there at James Guess and uh, Tom Canning, I think, instead of Darren Turner today in the Aston Martin, uh, Aston Martin Vantage GT4 Feathers Motorsport prepared car. As you can see, we're well set up to bring you all of the action right the way around the full in Alton Park International circuit today. And for these drivers, this is their first look at the track with it beginning to dry. So pole position today went to the Team ABBA Racing Mercedes of Richard and Sam Neary. It's the WPI Motorsport Michael Igo and Phil Keencar alongside, then Lucky Kira, Richard Marsh and Sam Randon on row two. The third row of the grid, Raw Motorsports Radical, started by Steve Burgess, he'll hand over to Ben Dimack later on, and the Make Happen Racing Ginetta G55 Super Cup car, started by Chris Hart, later to hand over to Stephen Walton. Paddock Motorsport next, Tom Rawlings in the McLaren, Orange Racing Simon Orange on Ginetta GT5 Super Cup car duty this weekend. Then it's the McLaren of Michael Price starting off. He'll be sharing with Callum McLeod, Enduro Motorsports Morgan Tilbrook in the Mercedes. Then on to the sixth row, Graham Tilly in the Nissan Nismo. Sen and Fielding deputising uh, today as the co-driver and then Craig Wilkins. Uh, Steve Barrow, uh, Tom Barrow next for Saxon Motorsport, James Guest and Tom Canning next up. Then it is uh, Josh Jackson starting in the uh, McLaren in the Orange Racing powered by JMH car with Warren Gilbert next up. Veluga Racing on the ninth row of the grid, Carl Cavers We're next to him in the Greystone GT McLaren Ian Campbell. Tenth row of the grid, Paul Bailey and Ian Duggan. The grid completed very quickly by Mark Hopton and David Holloway. Patrick Collins starting the Ginetta, Richard Mason next up from Michael Clark, Nick Phelps, James Simon, Steve Ruston, Alex Stevenson and John Harrison. But we are GT Cup racing here and you can see on the outlap not that much spray but as they come into life and go into Old Hawk for the first time there is a lot of spray for the drivers to deal with and some of those that are going to be out of position are certainly going to have their work cut out over the course of this 40 minute pit stop race. It's a great clean start as we watch uh, the 34 Porsche of Sam Randon, the class leading Porsche or group leading Porsche, I should say. That's my first uh, gaff of the commentary. It's, it's groups, not classes, of course, in GT Cup. And this is going to be the first lap sort out. Not so much spray as you can see as they head out of Lakeside through the left hand curve at Ireland. David Holloway uh, is chasing. He'll be partnered up by Bradley Ellis. Local to me is Bradley. Lives down in Croydon, around about uh, half a mile or so away from me. But a great start by Richard Neary. Fantastic to see the interview with Sam, who came through. And I'll probably talk about Ginetta scholarship a lot because we've got a lot of Ginettas on the grid. It's something that uh, I'm involved with. And Sam came through that. And there he is now, about six foot five, with a full beard. And you meet them when they're 13, 14 year old teenagers. There in the number nine car is uh, Warren Gilbert making the start and the defending champions in, well, two cars, of course, Josh Jackson running in the McLaren for starters and will won't hand over Simon Orridge racing in the Ginetta for this race, the orange livery car, as we pick up on Morgan Tilbrook and Marcus Clutton. Morgan, of course, the sporting driver. The sporting drivers will start the cars and then the Pro Sport or Pro Drivers will then take over at the appropriate juncture. Uh, Michael Igo keeping Richard Neary fairly keen at the moment. So the Lamborghini Huracan GT3, GT3 front row, second row shared by GTC and GTB. The Nissan making good progress as well. Goes through on the inside line of Tom Rawlings who will share with Mo Ritson today. Mo, another driver met through the Ginetta Scholarship. Um, went GT racing straight away as soon as he was 16 did Mo Ritson and uh, good to see him in action in the GT Cup Championships. I think starting to settle down we'll get an idea of the, the flying lap so I can tell you that that opening lap already the rolling lap three seconds a lap quicker than we saw in qualifying and bear in mind that's a lot of drying that we've had over the last uh, hour or so. So Graham Tilly starts the 
Nissan Nismo. Quick chat with Alan Muggleston before the start of the race, the Triple M Racing Engineer. Told me that all was well and that Graham was looking forward to the race. Lovely to see Senon Fielding deputising for Will Tregertha this weekend. Will Tregertha racing over in Europe. That will, of course, entail uh, quarantines and things like that to uh, happen for him to, to come back. But I saw Senon racing in the GT Cup, and you might remember at Brands Hatch earlier on in the season and loves being back in and loves the fact that he's got two races today as the David Holloway car there passed by the Nick Phelps Veluga racing car. Veluga of course now racing in Carrera Cup and in the Visit Cayman Islands Porsche Sprint Championship which is here and sort of three pronged or three championship attack this year for Veluga Racing and doing well in all of them. Lewis Plato racing in the Carrera Cup and he's with us today. So John uh, Lancaster and Rich Mason in there, McLaren going through shot. Meanwhile, Josh Jackson, that car, as you heard Michelle say in the introduction to the meeting, actually both of those guys leading two classes. GTA with the Ginetta G55. We're expecting to see the Lotus Peter Jackson with us this weekend. Uh, as well, but uh, a no-show. Also, the number one car, of course, the McLaren leading GTH by a very healthy 35 points at the moment in the championship over uh, James Guest and Tom Canning for this race. So the Nissan going through, it's Neary and Neary still at the front of things with Michael Igo sharing with Phil Keane in P2. Lucky Kira is in third place. Lucky, a very prolific racer now, likes to be known well, we like to call him the fastest Punjabi on his racing CV. Quite a character. He's lucky as well. So Graham Tilly in sixth position at the moment in the Nissan. So good progress up from 11th on the grid for the Nissan. But as you can see, clear track at the moment ahead of him. So some work to do as he heads off the Marsh Randon uh, GT. B group leading Porsche 991. Good group of cars in behind as well. Let's start to talk about pit stops. We've got a little while to go. The pit stops for safety reasons now in GT Cup split into two groups. Group 1 comprising GT3, GTO and GTC and Group 2 comprising GTB, GTH and GTA. And the Group 1 cars will come in between 19 and 23 minutes on the first race. Um, and following that, 23 minutes uh, and 28 minutes, we'll see the Group 2 cars come in. And then that swapped around for the second race of the day, or indeed over the course of the weekend. So that we swap round for our race a little bit later on. So the number 80 car going through shot, Craig Wilkins and Aaron Scott. Second position for them in the red and black Janetta. G55, the Scott Sport car, one win, four second places thus far this year. There in the 67 car is Simon Orange, chairman of Sail Sharks Rugby, a very accomplished driver now, cut his teeth racing in the uh, BRSCC Mazda Championship, a driver which is uh, a class which is so well supported, unsurprisingly producing some very good drivers further up the GT racing ladder now. The numbers in that championship, absolutely incredible. And production sports car racing, obviously, feeding into the likes of the GT Cup Championship, British GT, Ginetta Super Cup, various other championships as well. Dare I say as well, probably, uh, Carrera Cup Great Britain as well. So Simon Orange looking to maintain the class lead. Pit stop wise, a timed pit stop with success seconds added for drivers uh, who have done well. There is Chris Hart in his Janetta. So Chris Hart up ahead at the moment. So this is a, a group battle for GTA. Chris Hart and Stephen Walton currently fourth in the standings. Just the one second place, their highest finish so far of the season. And let's see what Simon Orange can do. Certainly closed him down. Remember, we said that overtaking was a premium. When I spoke to Alex Stevenson, who is in another of the Janettas this morning, he said that during qualifying the windscreen wiper packed up and I said that must have made things difficult and he said to be honest it wasn't really much better when the wiper was working 
don't have the luxury of aircon in that car, but the next door car to them in the garages uh, very much does have. So this the uh, GTA. GTA currently led by this is the battle for the lead. Graham Tilly now up into third position in GT3. Neary Neary from Igo and Keane and the Tilly and Fielding car in third position. There is Richard Neary at the wheel of the ABBA commercials car. It's fascinating actually for me to see a father and son pairing. It's something when when you commentate and sorry to bang on uh, when you've done Janetta Junior for a long time and indeed Fiesta Juniors we, we've always had a lot of conversations about having an end of season uh, race for parents you know like you do at sports day uh, when the parents get out on track and do do a sack race or whatever it is um, and we did talk for, for a long time about maybe having an unofficial uh, dad's race I think at the time we were looking at uh, maybe getting Lee Caroline or maybe even Lee's, Lee's uh, granddad Dave Caroline who used to be a racer in his own right out um, so Sam Sam Neary racing with his dad, what, what I'm getting around eventually to saying is that we, we probably expect the youngsters to set the pace and the battle for the GTA class. Simon Orange having a look up the inside line and Chris Hart holds doggedly onto the lead. It is a little bit of a run across the grass. The worrying moment for the Janetta now would be, is that orange car going to overheat? How much grass has he got in the radiator? Uh, from here, great shots. Actually, I think he's maybe got away with that quite lightly. So the 2-1-2 car of Chris Hart, the Make Happen Racing machine, still defending the lead. The boy's getting stuck in. We're 10 minutes into the race already. And, of course, the group leader, points-wise, the 67 car of Simon Orange, wants to get that lead through Dear Lee. Maybe, at the moment, just regrouping and seeing if, if he can work out where... Perhaps there might be a weak spot for Chris Hart. Meanwhile, a little bit further back, very, very frenetic indeed. Warren Gilbert in the championship leading Lamborghini. A switch to them from Marcus Mantis this year, as you will know. And a big moment for me this morning, seeing the 28 car, which is the Brabham BT62, on its second meeting with us in, in GT Cup. The Ferrari 488 was the car used earlier on in the season by Paul Bailey, the sporting driver, and Ross Wiley, his pro driver. Ross, a driver who have followed through the Scottish motor racing scene as a leading light in the Scottish Motor Racing Club Formula 4 1600 Championship. And the championship leader was off on the grass, manages to recover. That was a little bit of a worrying moment. Got back on track. So the number nine car will have a little bit of uh, dirt on his tyres. It just goes to show you how hard these drivers are, are charging to try and get as much position as possible. Through goes the Brabham. Fascinating talking to Paul Bailey about that this morning. And Paul, of course, only his second race meeting in this car in the Brabham. Wonderful and evocative to see a Brabham on the grid. Great to see David Brabham here as well. Uh, and let's hope that we see more of them as, as they bring that iconic name, truly iconic name, back into international motor racing. Superb to see. So Josh Jackson right in the mix as well. Currently running fifth in GTH. The points, of course, are largely based on the number of starters per group. So if you do well in a, in a very well supported group, you'll get more points for three starters or more per group, 25 points. Two starters in your group, 18 points for a win, this is by the way, and 15 for a solitary starter, assuming you do get to the finish. And well, really getting stuck in there. Warren Gilbert certainly not being put off by that moment. Clatters the Porsche and also the Armco barrier. Goodness me. Really having to work as the, the space as best he can around the track. Michael Price is in behind as well. You can see Michael Price in the uh, second green and white car. That's the McLaren of Michael Price. His uh, former championship, the Porsche Club Championship, racing here today. Uh, and I'm worried now about the damage on that championship leading number nine car. Looks like he might be starting to lose a little bit of pace. Second in the championship is the race leading Mercedes-Benz AMG GT3 of Richard Neary. And if that number nine car, currently running in second position in Group GTB, 
uh, has picked up a problem, then that two-point championship lead is going to disappear very, very quickly indeed. You can see at the moment they're chasing the 12th position car, Richard Marsh, Sam Randon. That's the leader in the Group GTB at the present time. Second is Nick Phelps, down in 18th place, so very clear in GTB at the present time as they come through the Hislops chicane. There is Nick Phelps in his Porsche, busy chasing the number 31 car. That is Michael Clark, the uh, extra addition to the programme this weekend for Veluga Racing. Another of the Ginetta's in the mix there, and that is the 80 car. So Craig Wilkins, who will hand over to Aaron Scott. So meanwhile, trying to get clear and looking around the outside line here is that number nine machine as they come out of Lodge Corner. There isn't room, and there's a pass for position there. And going through are gonna, is going to be, well, not quite, managing to get the position back, the 66 car of uh, Morgan Tilbrook. Pairs up with Marcus Clutton, of course, a championship winning driver many times in his own right, Marcus Clutton. Reigning GT3 uh, champion with John Seal. So this race settling down very nicely now, 25 minutes remaining. So a lot of the team's going to be starting to think about the pit stops. They'll have well, put a lot of thought into it early stages but it might be a decent idea to get out of this battle that we've got here. 12th place, the Marsh Brandon uh, Porsche. Michael Price having a good run as well in the McLaren. Michael currently fourth in GTH. If he can get past the car in front, he will move up one position in the standings. Down behind him is the Tilbrook Clutton Mercedes AMG GT4 and Randon here coming under pressure as they come down from Hilltop. The braking not quite uh, enough, quick enough to get the run down the inside line. You've got to exercise a certain amount of discretion uh, for sure. Mike Price trying to get involved in the mix as well. And that Porsche just holding sway here. Richard Marsh, 12th position, leading GTB. Nick Phelps, as we mentioned, down in 18th, six cars back. So no immediate group pressure for him at the moment as the race leader starts to uh, begin to get into a little bit more traffic. So Richard Neary working the traffic well. And this augurs well for Sam taking over. Remember, the Group 1 cars will pit first. 31 car is the Michael Clark Veluga Racing Porsche. So, car coming into pit lane and some problems, very, that's Nick Phelps who is off. So Nick Phelps, second position in GTB, has a moment, slides off, glances the barrier, the mirror's gone and the race has gone now for Nick Phelps. He's not sharing in, in this race, but disappointment for the Veluga racing car. It means we do have the wave jellos at Old Hall. What's the gap now between Neary and Michael Igo as we watch the 35 car. Marshall's picking up uh, potentially a souvenir. I'm sure it will get returned to the team. The gap first to second, 14.1 seconds, Michael Igo. Lucky Kira, not spoken too much about Lucky at the moment. He is in third place and, of course, leading Group GTC. GTO headed by the Radical RXC of Steve Burgess and Ben Dimack. Ben, a, a driver we've come across before. Oh, I have commentary-wise in the Mini Challenge. They're all looking very good at the moment. Fastest lap outright as well. 1 minute 45.151. And bear in mind, it was 152s in qualifying. So that shows you, and it is the sporting drivers, of course, that have to qualify the car and also start the car. So we're getting a good picture of the pedigree of the sporting drivers in each race. And Richard Neary, as they have done over the course of the season thus far, eight wins from 10 races for Richard and Sam Neary. Sam only, say only, a pro sporting driver. Um, 
and still young of years, so will undoubtedly be a pro driver um, grading in years to come. Very exciting talent to watch. So halfway point, the 35 car limping its way back round. You can see with the aerodynamics severely impaired on the back of the car, that is very definitely going to be a visit to the pits for Nick Phelps. The uh, runner-up at the moment, second position in Group GTB. Two wins and four second places thus far in the championship. But time to catch up with Craig Wilkins. Craig Wilkins now on the back end of Chris Hart. So let's see what Craig could do. Another driver like Michael Price, who raced in the Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli. We're on Pirelli rubber this weekend as well. And I'll tell you what, when you talk to Craig Wilkins, he absolutely loves racing in GT Cup and loves racing the Ginetta as well. Um, has said to me in the past that he thinks that it's just about the best car he's driven. And capable racer is Craig. Meanwhile, Nick Phelps comes into pit lane. Interesting to see whether they get that out again or maybe garage it and just decide to regroup Graham Tilly up to fifth position from 11th, so six passes for the TechServe UK car, the 69-year-old from Leicestershire, raced, I think, with Nigel Mansell, Formula Ford back in the day, if I remember having that conversation with Graham Tilly several seasons ago when he raced in the Ginetta GT4 Super Cup. Uh, a very versatile and quick racer. And here's our first proper look at the Radicals. He's running class-leading GTO, fourth position outright, so chasing Lucky Kira, and then down behind them it is Simon Orange. Now let's have a quick look and pick up on Simon in the number 67 car. Right, driver window is open, remember the Group 1 cars will be in first, so half the field eligible for the first pit stop window. GT3, GTO and GTC, and Sam Neary already in. Are we going to see the Radical come in as well? We should see a change for the lead, such was the Neary's lead that they are still showing uh, out at the top despite being in the pit lane. Michael Igo will hand over to Phil Keane. Lucky Kira will come in and remain in the car but serve the requisite time in the pit lane. So the Radical going through. I was going to have a quick look down, see if we could see where Simon Orange was in the 67 car. The answer is not showing too highly up at the moment, Simon Orange in the 67. Um, had that issue, didn't he, going across the grass earlier on? But I can tell you that GTA, currently headed by Chris Hart from Craig Wilkins, and then third in GTA uh, is the Townsend Duggan Fox Motorsport Geneta, uh car. The Brabham is in the pit lane as well. And you can see why the organisers have done such a super job. Paul Bailey in the Brabham will, of course, be handing over to Ross Wiley, the young Scott. It'll be interesting to see the change of pace, perhaps, for some of the drivers as they hand over to their uh, pro drivers, particularly with the predominantly Janetta. GTA, or in fact, wholly Ginetta um, GTA group for this race. Neary, Neary back out on track now. And a spin, very sadly, for the Mercedes Benz. Manages to whiz the car back around onto the grass without going too far. And thankfully, back in the race safely. So, picked a good moment there. Did Morgan Tilbrook. Or is it Marcus Clutton? I can't remember if that car has actually been into the paddock yet, but Marcus Clutton, I suspect, will be the less likely of the two drivers to have had the problem. Tom Barrow in the BMW M1. 13th position at the moment for Tom Barrow. Coincidentally, where the Saxon Motorsport car started alongside the Feathers Motorsport, Aston Martin of James Guest and Tom Canning. Getting a bit greasy out there now, isn't it? And Mark Hopton having that problem as well. We'll see the GTH cars coming into pit lane very shortly in the second batch. I can tell you that the uh, Nissan 
has gone out now, so it is Senon Fielding who takes over in the Nissan. It will be interesting to see whether Senon can get further up the order. Currently running third in GT3. Senon loving his racing and uh, nice to have a chat with him this morning about... He's one of the, the coaches that Janetta use, having come through the scholarship himself, and he'll be with me in the first weekend in November coaching the drivers up at Blyton Circuit and you know how many junior drivers we're going to see come through into this championship as well in later in later seasons so Carl Cavers I think might be doubling up this weekend racing in the Visit Cayman uh, Porsche Challenge dicing with Tom Barrow they are on separate laps I think at the moment probably I was going to say about probably a good time to look at the various class podia positions at the moment, but we'll do that once the second batch of uh, pit pit stops have, have changed over. It's still uh, 19 seconds between Sam Neary now ahead of Phil Keane. So remember, pro sporting driver, leading pro driver at the moment, Mercedes and Lamborghini Huracan with uh, up into third place now. Impressive pace, not had the pit stop yet, but impressive pace from Chris Hart in the 2-1-2 Janetta G55 Super Cup car. Lucky Kira busy chasing Steve Rushton in the McLaren 570. See what Lucky could do in the Ferrari. Very talented driver Lucky Kira has learnt his craft amongst all sorts of uh, cars. She's seen him do two meetings in one weekend, sort of hopping out of the Ferrari that you see here, racing in Ferrari Challenge, and then going and doing a uh, Carrera Cup race in Porsche on the Sunday. So absolutely loves his racing. So the Radical coming in. So Radical coming in for probably one of the later changes. There is Carl Cavers. Lucky Kira makes the very neat pass in the 247 car. Looks like he's picked up a little bit of damage on the front left-hand side of the car. So Steve Burgess will hand over to Ben Dimmock. Lucky Kira having uh, stopped. He's actually leading GTC and is yeah leading the class for GTC at the moment. Who else have we got in GTC today? Jensen Lund, Warren Gilbert, who are away at the moment. And then the James Simons, uh, Fraser Smart. Lamborghini second in the uh, championship standings. Now, how is the Nissan coping with this? We would have dropped down the order with the pit stops. And uh, we'll get a true picture on where we are once the Group 2 cars have been in, namely the GTBs, GTH and GTA runners. So Sen and Fielding, having done a fair bit of racing out in Asia, it's fair to say that Sen is very much an in-demand driver. It's easy to see why, with the pedigree that he has coming up from uh, Janetta, won Asian championships as well. Um, like so many drivers getting scuppered a little bit by the Covid travel restrictions. Car racing not so badly, if you're, if you're a fan of two-wheel motorsport you might have been watching some uh, Speedway and the top drivers in the world in Speedway largely stuck on mainland Europe but thankfully over here in the UK we've got some of the very best GT drivers in the world and whilst a few of them are going off and using their elite sport status to be able to get in and out of the country. Still do at the moment have to quarantine. Waiting to see how the guideline changes in a couple of weeks are going to affect everything. But uh, this is a great shot, isn't it? Here, the Mercedes leading the Brabham. Wonderful to see the Brabham name in the BT62. Coming back to a point I was going to make earlier on when we were talking about the uh, Brabham was that the... Uh, driver of the car, the first driver of the car, Ross Wiley in there at the moment, but Paul Bailey telling me that this is a very much a long-term project for him. This is only his second race in the car, and he's fully expecting to race and develop that car for the next three or four seasons. Um, he's even got a plan mapped out. What's he going to do to it 
uh, when he finishes racing it, whatever he moves on to, he's going to convert it to a road car. So he's going to get it put to road spec. So uh, great that, that that plan is mapped out. But what he was saying to me was, you know, don't expect big things for, from me personally at the minute because he said, you know, it's like learning to, to play the piano. You're not going to play a piano concerto after five minutes in the car. Um, but it, we were seeing really big increments as he learned the track this morning, hadn't been out at all park in the wet, let alone in that car. So running really, really well indeed. Ross Wiley, though, the driver of that at the moment, and you can see getting a little bit of a crack on in the Bradford BT62, which suffered a little bit of damage last time out, sadly. That was in our four race two day meeting at Snetterton. We opened up at Donington Park with the uh, traditional two-day format, a one-dayer on Brands Hatch Grand Prix for our second meeting. Snetterton, two-dayer was our third meeting. And now we've got Phil Keane with the fastest lap of the race. One minute, 36.997. Blistering lap from Keane. Bear in mind, pole time, 1.52, albeit set by the sporting drivers. So the Brabham continues apace, the GTO Brabham, remember it was the uh, Ferrari that they used earlier on in the season, coming down the inside line there is Phil Keane, and this is the battle for the outright lead now, and with that lap time it is only going to be perhaps a matter of time before that car makes the pass, are we going to see a class win here? You can see here that we've got the drying line and then particularly wet and I guess slippery off of that as Phil Keane has a look they're coming up to deal with some of the other runners as well so there's traffic to deal with Phil looking at the outside line as they go through Deer Leap so out of Deer Leap now and Keane very much all over the bat the last lap time for the Mercedes was a 142 so surely it's going to be just a matter of time before they go through it's Adam Carroll immediately ahead of them. Uh, Adam, of course, no slouch either. Blue flags being waved for Adam Carroll as the leaders again go through. So superb battle for the lead. And it's Sam Neary still out front. Phil Keane might potentially go for a run around the outside here. This is what I was saying at the start of the race. You've only really got to place the car half a car's width off the line. Makes it very difficult to pass. And this is for GT3 honours, remember, Phil Keane not. And I said about the line around the outside line on the banking, and he does it. That was like the carousel at the Nürburgring for the new race leader. Phil Keane goes high and wide on the banking. That was a beautiful move. You don't see that done too often, but Phil Keane knew exactly what he was going to do. And Sam Neary gave him the room to do it as well. Wonderful racing from the pair of them uh, there. And you have to say, as a pass for the lead, that's got to be one of the highlights of the races. And, well, just a bit of luck that I called out that you could do the different lines in weather conditions on that very, very steep banking. So, championship-wise, the, the Mercedes will be picking up the key points. Michael Igo and Phil Keane, uh, technically guest drivers in the championship. Uh, but going for the class win, won the sprint race on the Saturday at Donington Park so this could be the second win of the year for them the, the other winners that we've had in GT3 over the course of the season Stuart and Lewis Proctor Tom Canning another ex Janetta Junior driver so many of the youngsters learning their trade in that and so many now finding it a good move uh, and some say a good economical move to, to come away from karting fairly early on. There's Callum McLeod in the McLaren that he shares with Mike Price running in GTH. That is in second position. Trying to close the gap as we head with the hurricane of the race leader pulling clear now. It's 3.7 seconds. Having picked the moment to get into the race lead, absolutely superb stuff. Lucky Kira is running in fourth place the still the leading gtc car lucky kira second in gtc is the jensen lund warren gilbert car which is down in 13th so lucky's not really going to be under any big pressure over the remaining seven minutes of this uh, first of uh, the 11th 
the 11th race of the season for the GT Cup Championship. John Harrison handed over to Charlotte Gilbert in the lone now, Marcus Mantis for Top Cats Racing. Charlotte fifth in class in the points championship. Carl Cavers is there as well. Plus a first look at Ian Campbell and Ollie Webb who takes over. Ollie raced in Formula BMW. She raced in all sorts of things, carts. The original junior championship as well, T-Cars, if you remember that, it was run by the BRSEC and Ollie Webb ran in T-Cars. That was a great little championship. Space frame saloons, effectively, powered by Ford. And then went up into Formula BMW, as I mentioned, raced in Indy Lights. How cool must it have been to do that? And then coming back into Europe, racing in the European Le Mans Series and the World Endurance Championship. So that's the quality of driver that we have in the GT Cup Championship. So Ollie Webb running well, so it's Michael Igo and Phil Keane, the leaders outright and in GT3. Sen and Fielding now third overall. So that car has progressed extremely well indeed. From a fair way back on the grid into third position, Lucky Kira will go past the Ian Duggan, James Townsend, Janetta, GT55. Quick look and see where they are. They've actually dropped off the podium. James Townsend, Townsend and Ian Duggan. Heard him called Dugan earlier on in the year. That's not the correct one. It is Ian Duggan, knowing the Fox Motorsport boys well. Uh, hopefully get a chance to catch up with those guys a little bit later on. There's the third place car. Now, what are the gaps? Seven seconds on that last lap. Keen to Neary Jr. Keen some six seconds a lap quicker on the best lap in the Lamborghini Hurricane over Richard Neary. And that, I guess, is the difference in car conditions, pro and pro sporting driver. Senon fielding third, doing a 138. So Senon uh, himself four seconds quicker than, than Sam Neary. I'm assuming it was Sam that did that last car. Five seconds of that quicker than Richard uh, than Sam Neary on the last tour with five minutes to go. So let's have a quick look. GTA led by Aaron Scott and Craig Wilkins ahead of the Walton Hartcast in second place. Jason Orange. Jason, I knew I was going to do that. Simon Orange uh, has now got the 67 car onto the podium. There it is. This has been a good drive from Orange, who applies the curse of the commentator and gets the outside wheels on the grass opposite locks and is about to be passed by Callum McLeod. So Callum going to go past. This is actually for eighth position here. So McLeod looking to try and move past. That is That just goes to show you how well the GTA car... Uh, he's doing. So the 67, 30 class, trying to hunt down the Walton Hart car. Might have a little bit too much space to uh, to make up as the championship leading, or sorry, the defending champions car is passed by the Brabham. So Paul Bailey and Ross Wiley, of course, leading GTO with 135 points, three points clear of the Radical, Ben Dimack and Steve Burgess. So very tight championship between those two. And the Ross Wiley has got the Brabham up into fifth place and the class lead. So that, that's absolutely key for the Brabham. And we could well see a, a first, just checking this, a second class win because they won the second race at Snetterton, didn't they? The sprint race at Snetterton. But uh, great to see the Brabham being developed well, being driven well, and seeing some very good reliability. With three minutes on the clock, just going out of shot is Sam Deary. Senon fielding still in third. Fair way back is Senon. We're not going to see a battle. It's 20 seconds now, the gap for the race leader. GTH led by Michael Price and Callum McLeod. GTO led by the Brabham, as we mentioned, GTC being led by Lucky Kira. And GTB uh, led by the 34, Richard Marsh, Sam Random car. That's at the moment down in 21st place. Qualified superbly in the wet, got to say. Fourth position on the grid for the... 
for that car, really good. Drop back a little bit in terms of overall positions, but group-wise, uh, they've really made that team hard Porsche at work so, so hard indeed. So the 66 machine of Morgan Tilbrook and Marcus Clutton. Marcus will be at the wheel now, trying to close down on Sam Neary, who's out front. Two minutes on the clock for this 40-minute race. And uh, as you can see, not ideal conditions. It's still been a little bit of a struggle for some of the drivers. Phil Keane working his way very, very quickly through the traffic there. Quick look at that 31, Michael Clark in the white Veluga racing car. Had a problem earlier on. He is running second in GTC. GT said, see, led by Lucky Kira. So again, not threatening for uh, an overall uh, class win, group win, we should say, um, but still in for some uh, decent points and will stand very proudly on the podium for sure at the end of it. He is up ahead of the 36 machine as they go along Lakeside. Going round Arlen Ben once again. Uh, from here and up into the Shell Oils corner. Second position car goes through. Third place, Senan Fielding is, I think, a lap down on the leaders, but it's still Phil Keane out front. 1.36.9, his best lap time still. 1.38 on his last lap. A little bit of traffic affecting the race leader. 49 seconds remaining on the clock. Mo Ritson takes over in the 26 car now. Whereabouts the 26? Well, it's a podium for Ritson and Rawlings at the moment in GTH in their McLaren. They've come through into 11th position up ahead of the Campbell and Webb McLaren. So close stuff between the pair of them. But we're looking at the car that led the race from the start, the Mercedes. It was Richard Neary that made a super start of it and tried to build up as big a lead as possible initially over Michael Igo. Um, and did that well you can see the clock ticking down now so we've got to watch for the race leader Phil Keaton here comes the leader of GTA Aaron Scott partnered up with Craig Wilkins and the key thing you'll know from this is it, it, it is very much and you talk to any of the pro drivers it is very much a team effort where you've got a sporting driver and a pro sport or pro driver both have to do their bit in order to earn the silverware and that very much the case with Michael Igo and the chat around the paddock is that Michael Igo is one very very quick sporting driver and Phil Keane as we know fastest lap in the race an extremely quick and competent pro with that wonderful manoeuvre to take the lead uh, the Shell Oils hairpin he's coming down and having a look at the Tom Barrow BMW which I'm sure he will clear possibly going up Clay Hill we'll see how wet it is offline there Barrow goes to the outside line, Keane very neatly to the inside. You can see it is drying enough there for him not to have to worry. I'm not sure Phil would be worried in, in any case. But through Druids for the final time, and it will be a second outright win of the season for this car through Deer Leap. One more machine to negotiate that's the uh, I think that's uh, Russ Lindsay uh, who is in there and there is the checker it is a win for Phil Keane and Michael Igo who take it and fine style superb first and second half from both drivers it's the Mercedes running in second position we wait for that drivers already busy taking the check of flag there is the ABBA commercials Mercedes which will take P2 Graham Tilly said and fielding in third place lights on as they chase Rich Mason and John Lancaster's car which is a little way back there is the second place car across the line so Sam and Richard Neary uh, will take that followed appropriately perhaps by the other uh, Mercedes going across the line as well Morgan Tilbrook and Marcus Clutton will go across the line. There is the uh, Brabham, fifth position. It's a GTO win again for Paul Bailey and Ross Wiley. Our congratulations to them. So in terms of the classes, Igo and Keane taking outright in GT3. Neary Neary second 
in GT3, second overall, third overall, and third in GT3 to Graham Tilly and Senn and Fielding. The GTC winner is Lucky Kira, as across the line goes Senn and Fielding to secure third place in GT3 and indeed overall. GTO won by Ross Wiley and Paul Bailey in the Brabham BT62. GTH won by Michael Price and Callum McLeod in the number 90 car, which will cement their third place in the championship. Uh, we're going to have to do some sums after race number one. GTA won by Aaron Scott and Craig Wilkins, who started in the uh, Ginetta, unsurprisingly being the GTA class, as Phil Keane will wave to the marshals and a uh, good number of fans that have come in today despite the weather here at Alton Park. And GTB won by Richard Marsh and Sam Randon. So I think I've given you a, a quick run through of the six group winners and as I say some serious maths to do to work out how that has changed things around in the championship as we head to our second race of the day which is uh, was scheduled to be starting at three o'clock we we're running a little bit behind due to an incident with the barriers earlier on there is the uh, championship championship uh, defending champion Josh Jackson class leader group leader we should say sorry old habits uh, group leader in GTH Josh Jackson in the orange power by JMH McLaren and number one car a little bit away away from things here but hopefully uh, we'll get a better rub of the green this afternoon if things continue to dry I know the weather forecast yesterday when we looked was that we were going to get the rain towards the end of the day which we kind of had fingers crossed would be um, you know after racing finished today with the three o'clock start we were kind of hoping to be uh, done and dusted by four which was when the rain was due to come in uh, particularly not that anyone minds racing in the rain but yesterday many of the cars had, had done a test day and you ideally want the racing conditions particularly on Alton Park because it's the, the first time for many of the drivers to be racing here championships first visits in 2018 you want the conditions to you know to mirror what you have in testing so it, it was a little bit of a lottery this morning for some of the drivers. Great work by the marshals. A big, big thank you to all of our marshals doing such super work as ever here at Alton 2 Keepers Racing. I think it's one thing that uh, marshals have, have maybe, and I'm not being cynical here, but with lockdown, I think the marshals have, have seen a lot of people come out of the come out of the cupboard uh, and want to go marshalling so they could get to a track so that that's good and long may that continue then once they've got the habit here are the results for you the overall win to Igo and Keane in the Lamborghini in GT3 one two three for the GT3 grouping the team ABBA racing Mercedes of Sam and Richard Neary second from Graham Tilly and Senon Fielding fourth position another great drive from Lucky Kira in the Ferrari 488 winning the GTC group GTO won by Paul Bailey and Ross Wiley in that fantastic Brabham BT62 Michael Price uh, and Callum McLeod victorious in the GTH group they took sixth position outright and a GTA victory for Craig Wilkins and Aaron Scott that was replicating what they did uh, in Donington, the first race of the weekend and indeed the first race of the weekend at Brand South. So it looks like Snetterton, the only circuit to have eluded those guys in terms of uh, a group win so far. Next up was the 31 Veluga Racing Porsche of Michael Clark. That was a, a good effort uh, from them. Mo Ritson and, Tom, and uh, Tom Rawlings next up. Ninth position, second in the GTH group. And our top 10, and indeed podium completed for the GTH grouping. The number 23 car of Ian Campbell and his pro driver, Ollie Webb, in their McLaren. So some good points to be had from there. Let's go down into the pit lane where Michelle will be ready to get some reaction. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you, Richard. I am down here. The cars are all back in their garages. Well, what a fantastic race for Paul Bailey in that Brabham. Really good, considering it is his second time out in that car and certainly in these wet conditions. But Phil Keane, eh? Not only taking a fastest lap, but 
taking the win with some superb driving, very well deserved and very well done to him. Of course, Sam Neary will be looking to remedy that in race number two. And we are going to have that for you live right here at around about 10 to 3. So we look forward to seeing you then.